the opinions, viewpoints, and beliefs presented on this program do not necessarily reflect those of the management, the affiliates, and broadcast partners, or the sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. Between science and ignorance, there is filler. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Paranormal Filler, broadcast live January 31st, 2016. I'm your host, Wes Forsyth, and of course, every week, Paranormal Filler is brought to you by LiveParanormal.com, the Paranormal's social social community with live interactive broadcasting, and uh, also sponsored by Ken Boggle's House of Cards, visit TarotByKin.com Tonight, I'm not even allowed to say my guest name because I cannot roll the R in her first name. <laughs> so I'm not even going to try. But it is CC Curl. You know her as the queen of the paranormal. So as long as she lets me call her CC, we'll get along fine. I actually tried to uh, say her name and I have to roll the R and there is something about my tongue. It has never rolled anything Except a piece of gum around in the roof of my mouth. Um, this week's news. Not a lot has been going on here at the Paranormal uh, Filler Studio. Of course, we've been uh, working, trying to get the technical difficulties ironed out. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we're well on the way. We did figure out the video bug, and now we've got to figure out how to fix it. But I am broadcasting video live tonight with audio if everything continues working. Uh, I was invited this week to do two different paranormal conventions around the United States throughout the course of this year. The problem is, both of these paranormal conventions uh, did not want to pay my travel expenses, and they were, on the average, nine hours each direction, in the east and west of me. Um, one's a little farther, one's a little closer, but average nine hours. And, and while the idea of taking off work And driving nine hours and spending a couple of days in a hotel at my own expense is really, really inviting. I've just decided that, no, I'd rather spend my money on a real vacation. And, uh, you know, who knows, go to the mountains or or, or the Bahamas or Florida or something. So, um, So right now, the only thing on my calendar is the Scarefest. I haven't heard how the Scarefest uh, board meeting went today. Uh, they had a board meeting today, and as I've talked about, I'm not a I'm not a meeting guy. I don't do well in meetings, so I didn't go. I sent I sent Ken Bogle as my rep. And Cece, welcome to the show. Hey, how are you? Um, as I said uh, briefly when we talked a moment before the show, I am frazzled. Have you ever had one of those days where <laughs> anything you touched, nothing really went wrong, but just everything you touched just kind of went wrong? Just <laughs> I had that day today. That's why I was laughing when you were telling me about your day. <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing along with you saying I had that day. <laughs> I, I literally, here's how bad it was. To to go into the, to broadcast on the, the Blog Talk uh, channel, I have to key in a, um, a PIN number. And I normally just do it with my mouse. I couldn't, I tried four times and could not get that stupid thing. I finally had to do it on my keyboard like an old push button telephone. That, that's that's how bad my fingers were working. But anyway, uh, Cece, uh, just for the sake of argument, I want you to say your beautiful name one more time. My Polish name is Karosha Ona, which really is uh, Carolyn Ann. As simple as that. Uh, when I started doing Cece, um, starring as Cece Carolyn, Cece the Huntress uh, episodes for broadcasts out here in New England. Um, it was hard for people to pronounce <laughs> Ona. So we just went with Cece. And then I made the 
kind of crossover um, about two years ago to do larger events like the big Comic Cons and Chiller Theater and whatnot. And um, I needed, um, I didn't need a new name, but a gentleman said, well, don't you think you should sound like you're from Transylvania? And I'm like, oh, that's my Polish name. So we started to use what they call me at home all the time. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. So people still call me Cece, or they can call me K.O., because uh, Karosha is a little bit difficult to pronounce. Yeah, especially for a hick mountain uh, hill boy uh, like me from the from central Kentucky. Although, we, you know, with, with the, um, with the um, demographic change over to the uh, immigrant population, I'm going to have to learn to... Actually, I'm hoping I have to, I, I'll be dead before I have to learn to roll all my R's. Uh, so, and, you know, and as, as, as you know, I'm, I'm 50, you know, I've, I've gotten set in my ways. What can I say? You know, the, it's, the voice is what it is and it doesn't want to learn new things. Uh, now I'm excited to have you on the show only because, not only because. Oh, okay. What is this? <laughs> you are a dowser. I did not even, I had never read that part of your bio. I'd only read the stuff you put mm-hmm. at the top of the page. Um, you do a lot of your metaphysical work through dowsing. Yes, I and do. And I am an avid dowser. And according to oh, your really, bio, that's good. You have learned to do some of the things that I theorized were possible, mm-hmm. but I have not mastered yet. So we. Were, I've been using downy rods for uh, I can't even tell you how many years. I mean, just. So so many years when it came to investigating the you know the world of the unknown. Mm-hmm. I um I I of course now I, I'm I'm a latecomer to the field. I was a guy that watched too much TV, and <laughs> finally decided to go ghost hunting, and it got into my blood instantly. And yeah. then uh, through some events, I got into the metaphysical side of it. But even when I was doing the technical investigations with all the meters and all that stuff, I decided to try dousing early on because we use it on the farm. Uh, we mm-hmm. used it for other things, and so it was a very natural progression to me. I'd seen people do it on TV, but I really didn't see where they were accomplishing anything, you know, what I saw. But we started using it as a form of um, spirit communication. Now, we won't, we, we never did present it as evidence, but our thing was, it seemed to work. I'll put it that way mm-hmm. for the skeptics out there. But the main thing we were trying to do is, if this is working, then it's giving the spirits a reason to interact with us more freely than they might Mm -hmm. otherwise if they didn't think they could hear us. And so so by creating that bridge between us and the spirit world, we feel that it actually enhanced a lot of the other evidence collection that we did, including audio and video. Now, let me ask you a question. When you did the dowsing, what type of rod did you use? Did you use the ones that have, like, the sheath on them? No, I hate those things. Um, and the Me reason, too. The reason it, two things. First of all, I don't want to remove my direct contact from the rods. And to mm-hmm. me, like most of the time, the uh, sheath is plastic or wood. <laughs> and that's an insulator. Right. Um, so I didn't want to remove my, any of my energy from the rods. The other mm-hmm. thing is, my experience was on, on the ones that had those little tw- uh, twirly gigs on the handles. They, um, right. It makes the rods too easy to move. Dowsing, by its very essence, is going to be plagued with false energy readings. We'll call it false positives, idio, motor sure. effect, whatever. Mm-hmm. But I found that by having direct contact with the rods, where I could really clamp down on them, and using bigger rods. I like the big uh, 18 to 24 inch ones. Uh, I have a large one. And do you agree with me that it... I put it, my th- The reason I started using them... Which actually, okay, technically, technically, the reason I started using that size was that is approximately the size of the coat hangers that I was used to using. Uh, yeah, If you cut them exactly. and bend them and straighten mm-hmm. them, that's about the size. So they, yeah. they, it felt comfortable to me. But I wanted, when I go into a place mm-hmm. and I want to communicate, I want something to put, I want it to put forth enough effort to move those big rods. Right. Um, and and I feel like that might, in theory, it would take out some of the false positives, and uh, and give me a clearer reading of what I'm what I'm dealing with. Oh, exactly. I've been using them. I was I started off with ghost stories of New England, 
and I use the you know the video as a medium to teach. And then we the, the kids said, let's do something a little more funky. So we called it Cece the Huntress, and I went out by myself to these locations that made it impossible to have like a television crew go into. It was just my son and I, and um, I would use the dowsing rods there. I had these balls on the end. I, I bought them that way because they glowed in the dark. Mm-hmm. And that's crazy. I spray painted them with spray paint. No, well, you know, the glow in the dark paint. Right. So people could actually see them in the dark. <laughs> so could I if they were moving. But, you know, on these investigations, because the videographer, my son, could see because he had, you know, um, he could turn it to, so he could see in the dark, the IR. And I, I couldn't see a thing, but I could see the glowing rods, so I could tell you know, that uh, you know something's happening. Um, I like the straight rods, the longer rods, mm-hmm. and I do a lot of demonstration, whether it was the uh, paranormal conventions from years ago, which I don't do anymore. I do the large Comic-Cons and different type of events now. And I'm a teacher. I still teach. And what I do is I, I let people, I show them how to use the rods, and then I just take the energy from the spirit world and I pull it right down, zap into the rods. I've been working on this technique for years and I'm glad I'm able to teach it at a a large uh, group of people. And then they can physically feel the rods move. When they're asking questions, they will get a corresponding answer to the movement of the rods. And it really blows them away because they start to shake and vibrate and the buzzing goes up your arm. And we've even had security come over and say, why is everyone crying at your table? Well, it's because they're connecting with the spirit world. And they know these answers, that you know these questions that need answers. And so they ask the questions and they get a direct answer. It's amazing. And even sometimes people actually can see, right withholding those words, they can see the person that they're talking to that passed away. It's extraordinary. And people that haven't used dowsing and used it properly have never felt anything like that. That is a thrilling feeling. And so that's where I uh, like to do like that groundbreaking work and to teach other people on, la- on a larger uh, scale. Now, see, now you just described where I hit my own roadblock. I do do uh, I do seminars on dowsing and, and mm-hmm. show, show people how, how to... Um, properly use them in a way that will at least cut down on the false positives and everything. Sure. But what I ran into, now first of all, the very first dousing (laughs) seminar that I ever did, I mean, I threw myself out there and I pulled up a a person from the audience Mm -hmm. and said, okay, we're going to douse with you. And I pulled the one person out of the audience that had been hit by lightning, not once, but like three times in their life. (laughs) And yeah. when they, when the rods, when I put them in her hand, they just went nuts. There, there was no, she could, but I, I gave her a pendulum and it wasn't her hands not being steady because she could hold a pendulum so steady. Mm-hmm. The way I described it, I would let this girl cut out my liver in the zombie apocalypse if, if that Ew. came down to it. Uh, because I mean, her hands were that steady, but the mm-hmm. rods went nuts in her hands. But I, I ran into the roadblock. I found that I'm not apparently not able to, or at least I have not, I should, let me rephrase it. I have not learned to transfer that energy to someone else through the rods. And right. what I ran into was that some people seem to be energy pushers. Energy flows away from them. Sure, of course Some, some people mm-hmm. are energy readers. Mediums are always good dousers because they're mm-hmm. used to accepting outside energy. Sure. Uh, so I have, now, if, you, if I, when I find what I call a receiver... I can I can bring them to tears as you described. I can exactly. create that connection, but I've never been able to overcome the people that seem to um, push energy away from them. We'll be right back. We're going to take a quick commercial break. Everybody, CC Carroll, Queen of the Paranormal on Paranormal Filler. I am a believer, but I'm not talking about the paranormal right now. I'm talking about PC-Matic. Nothing ever lives up to the hype. Like you, I've seen the TV commercials for PC-Matic. Since I obviously have to rely on my computers, I decided to give it a try. Now, do you have an older computer running maybe Windows XP? I do. 
and it's running like it's fresh out of the box. As a matter of fact, I've installed PCmatic on all of my Windows desktops, and yes, I can tell the difference. So, if your computer is running slow, or crashing, or if you just have to rely on your computers like I do, go to my website, ParanormalFiller.com, click the PCmatic banner, and then try one of their free scans. PCmatic, for speed, stability, security, you won't be disappointed. And welcome back to Paranormal Filler. So, um, um, on the uh, topic of, um, so you've ex- you've observed that too that people's energy flows in different directions. Well, it flows in different patterns and it fluctuates just like it does normally in in an environment. You know, any room outside, down the basement, we all have these uh, patterns of ebbing and flowing. Depends what pattern they're in. What I try to do before I even you know do this, and this might help you is just to talk very gently. I rub their arms, I calm them down, and we just chat just a little bit. And what I try to do is I take my hands and I stick them. If people see it, you know, you can see the photograph. I just stick the hands up and away from the rods. And what I'm doing is I'm making sure that their energy stays right there and that no other interfering energy can get through. It's almost like I'm pushing it back in. You know, and you can see me doing this. You know, people say, what do you do with your hands? You know, and I, and I tell them, oh, this person needs just a little more guidance than maybe somebody else. And you'll see either the hands working, you know, over time, or you just see them not moving at all because I don't really need that. It's just bl- to block outside interference. But that might help. So you're telling me I pretty much have to learn Reiki. No, I'm not saying that at all. Uh, I, you know, I am a Reiki master, and I'm also a I, uh, licensed physician in Karuna Reiki as well. I find my ability to manipulate energy, whether it's someone's energy, my own energy, I am a blunt object. Um, when I get in a haunted location, hey, I can hang with the best of them. But when mm-hmm. it comes to um, uh, the... The healing arts, we'll call it. And what you just described is falls into that same category. Right. I, I don't, because I cannot see auras, because I cannot see energy, um, or have not learned to, I, now I've never tried what you described, so I might try it. But um, mm-hmm. the, basically, you know, I just came up, I found it to be a reflection of their personality. A person that is, like me, outgoing. Now, oddly enough, now I'm a fairly good dowser when it comes to um, when I get in a haunted location. But because I, I literally open myself up and allow right. that to happen. But mm-hmm. I find that people that are the, 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 the life of the party, you might say, uh, uh-huh. are not usually as easy to douse. So that's why I didn't think of it as being an ebb and flows type thing. I just mm-hmm. found it to be um, more of a a trait that I knew could be overcome because I, I, I show, you know, I do show them you've got to learn to open yourself up. You've got to relax, you know, mm-hmm. you, you've got to, you've got to accept that energy in. And several people that I've worked right. with have learned to douse under those auspices. But what we're trying to do is not just douse for water, or electricity, minerals, gold. I haven't found any gold yet. I'm still looking. <laughs> I found my keys a time or two with them. Oh, <laughs> But we're trying to communicate with the spirit world. And energy needs energy to communicate. So how do you get that energy? And people always say, you've got like 8,000 people a day that walk by you and that you're dealing with all these people. And isn't that a deterrent? And I say, no, it's not. It's charging the energy in the area. And I've also been doing this for years. I used to be a a professional vocalist. I, I toured with the Rolling Stones. I was a backup singer. And I was also a backup singer for Joe Cocker that passed, just passed away. And um, s- several of the large people like Tom Jones, Bobby Vinton, and the list goes on when they came into town, I, I would do this. But I learned from a, um, that young age doing that backup singing um, is that you can really charge the positive energy. So what I do with my lectures when I do a discussion, I bring in a PA system. I get them all singing and dancing and I even have it at my table. I got the music going, we're all dancing and singing, and I'm pulling that energy from everybody that's happy. 
everybody and from the universe and sticking it right into the rods. We're keeping the energy right around here. So it's very hard for them not to tap into the energy from the past because they've got the pathways right there. So I use that to my advantage, not to my disadvantage. Now, that's one thing I've not had trouble with. I've, uh, matter of fact, now that you mention it, I hadn't really done the math on it, but I've actually had s- some of my better sessions at larger events where there was more, yes. more energy. That's why, um, because there's so much energy over there, and they're all happy to be there and happy to see who they come to see and pay all the money to whatever. And uh, it, it's a good form of energy, and that's what you tap into. Okay, well, like I said, that makes sense. Now, um, now, of course, on my own side, now I always said that I'm not a particular, particularly gifted dowser. Um, in that, sometimes it takes me. It seems to take me longer to to open up. Uh, and I think, I, in other words, I think a ghost needs a little bit more uh, mojo sometimes to communicate uh-huh. directly with me than, uh, say, my wife. My wife is a very gifted dowser. Uh, ghosts are just attracted to her because it's like they can see that this is the person that we can get our message uh, across to. Exactly. And so, but at the same time, you know, it is. Uh, I have had a lot of fun with it. We we play a lot of games with it, and it and uh, some experiments uh, recently. We decided mm-hmm. to finally do a, a a really solid EVP session while we were dousing, and the guys were just amazed. They were hearing the answers, uh, and you know what and. And you know why? Because all this time we'd been trying this, we said, we'll do an EVP mm-hmm. session while we're doing analysis. Never had a lot of luck, some luck. But then it occurred to me one night, you know, I never told them, say the answer when you move the rods. Um, in other words, I wasn't giving good instructions. So now we've okay. got this whole new direction to go in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, uh, but at the same time, it, you know, it was one of my more cooperative uh, ghosts that I, I talk to all the time. Um, now, in your uh, bio course, now this, that it was one thing that I think led me to the metaphysical side of the paranormal because mm-hmm. I, uh, when I learned that I could do the um, the communication with them and not have to be mm-hmm. a full blown medium, I call it pseudo psychic when I do it. Right. I uh, I it did draw me to the the helpful side because before that, I'd always told me people said, "Can you get a ghost out of my house?" And I said, "That's not my job." Uh, you know, I don't know enough about, but once I learned to communicate through that, um, um, crutch for lack of, that's, that's what my spirit guides call it. They call it a crutch. Uh, then I was more comfortable doing the psychoanalysis <coughs> to get somebody's grandmother to finally go home or what have you. Mm-hmm. So now, but in your bio, you talk about, uh, healing, uh, both I mean, working with both the living and the departed. Um, Absolutely. The departed, we understand. Mm-hmm. How does this enhance your ability to heal the living? Well, because everybody has a spirit. We all have an energy field, whether we're alive or dead. And so I like to consider my work, um, I'm not going to say I'm a faith healer, but I'm a healer of the heart. I try to take that energy that they have and bring it back to a time of innocence. And that would be the time of birth and bring back all that good positive energy. So then they can go forward and maybe feel better psychologically, maybe feel better physically. Um, I think a lot of people in the paranormal that want paranormal investigators to come over or, or want to talk to a psychic or want to speak with me need someone that they can talk to. And so we become counselors without degrees Mm -hmm. and you have to know how to uh, converse because it could be just as simple as a placebo where they just need to touch your hands a nice pat on the back a big hug and they go on their way and they're happy Um, my hope thing is to give that positive energy give that good feeling uh, from birth and take it forward and it transcends all religions all ethnicities all cultures all disabilities, all colors, race. Um, it, it doesn't need um, any of that. In fact, I have quite a few, and I know the thing with Trump is send all the Muslims home. I have quite a few Muslims that actually come to see me 
and I work with them, whether they're from Turkey, Pakistan, Lebanon, I'm t- conversing with them on Skype. Um, I can remember an incident two years ago. Um, I was conversing with this gentleman, uh, and his energy was low, and he had a translator, and um, we're chatting away, and I told him, you know, I did it, a healing, and what to do with the water. You need to drink water for three days, sip it. And he said, drink it like wine, you know, and I said, no, <laughs> no getting drunk, just sip, sip for three days. And, um, and then after that, he felt better. He said to me, how will I know it's working? And I said, when you go outside and you smile and they smile back and, and the more and more you smile and the more and more they do, the better the energy will be. And so he was extremely happy. And then he disappeared off of um, off of the Skype, and the, uh, de- I have a friend in the Defense Department that spent a long time talking to me about it. <laughs> so um, it was um, it was nice to be able to help. I don't know what this gentleman did for a living. I don't care. I was just there to be able to to direct the energy and give him more. I um when I, I you know I I never use the term direct term faith healer but now a lot of times i now that's one thing uh the, the skeptic side of me kicks in every now and then because i will mm-hmm. tell people when when i go into someone's home to help them with their paranormal problems it might be that i'm throwing energy around and i'm crossing over spirits and i'm i'm doing god's work mm-hmm. or i might be putting on a good enough show that i'm convincing these people that everything is hunky-dory and as either as long as it works, either way, I'm happy, and and well, you know the success well, rate. You know, because I I think a lot of the paranormal, even though I believe I'm not a skeptic, I believe in the paranormal. I think so much of it we make worse or create with our own minds, mm-hmm. and open these channels to the negative that right. um, we 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 bring a lot of it on ourselves. Well, you know what I I always tell people: the paranormal is 98 percent made up in your head. It's the 2% that I look for. The rest I could care less. I do go in and consult. I try to be nice. But you're right. You can go in there and just, you know, throw your arms around and tell them the ghost is gone. And they're going to believe you because they want to believe you. Um, Or they have no friends. And then two weeks later, the ghost is back. And you're back at their house. And they're trying to cook dinner for you. (laughs) You (laughs) These things do happen. And, um, again, we're back to doing this counseling thing. But, you know, there is something that people really do miss. And I can't tell you how many investigators miss this. I'm going to ask you, what's the first thing you do when you go into for uh, an investigation? What is the very first thing you go in and do? Uh, Well, I have to picture it in my mind. Most of the time when I go in, I'm being asked to come in to help. And I Mm -hmm. try to make – so my answer may may not be typical. I try to um open myself up to the location not and when i say that i don't mean the ghost i mean i go around and i touch walls i i ask basically i guess you could say mentally i ask the home or wherever i'm at to mm-hmm. to work with me okay so that's what i do oh here i'm gonna throw you a curve this is a good one now um i, I did a show in a lime quarry and especially now you're in kentucky correct mm-hmm. yes okay And up here in New England, there's a lot of haunted houses, supposedly this, that, and the other thing. And the equipment goes crazy, and they can't figure out a reason. What they should be doing first when they walk into these homes is take a little bit of the horsehair plaster and test it. Because horsehair plaster mixed with lime in a kiln became quicklime. And these were used to plaster the walls and all your haunted inns, all your homes. All these areas, and now Lyme's quartz uh, gives off energy. In fact, they're going to be make, you know, making batteries with them and everything, and they can give your equipment a false positive or a false negative, and you'd never know. And it's very easy to test for it because you can test with your hand over the wallpaper or on the wall. If, if you see, like, the bumps and buzzle, that, that's probably the Lyme that wasn't, you know, calcified enough. And you can also take a little bit of it from underneath where... Um, like near the heater, uh, the heat vents, and put it in a shot glass with white vinegar. And the more it bubbles, it's a simple test. The more it bubbles, the higher the concentration of quicklime in the horsehair plaster. 
if it just kind of fizzles a little, then you know it's okay. Your equipment's probably going to be fine. Then you can take out your EMF meters and do a baseline reading. But the first thing you should do is actually check for the quick lime concentration in the walls because uh, that's very prevalent because that's what they use. And that will disturb your equipment uh, readings. And a lot of people don't know this. They don't do this because, again, they're watching shows on TV and thinking that's the way to do it. That's television. That's entertainment. That's different. What I'm doing and what you do and, and, and probably a couple of other people well, other groups, they actually go in and, and they're, they're mindful enough to try to do it the right way, not for an entertainment value. So you have to be educated enough to know what you're testing first, second, third, and go down the list. But I do know what I do is go in and then I make a note of what rooms might have this, that, the other thing. So I'll know if my equipment is um, acting up or just reacting to the, to the lime course and the, the quick lime in the walls. Everyone, you're listening to Paranormal Filler. We'll be right back after this word from our sponsor. I am a believer. But I'm not talking about the paranormal right now. I'm talking about PC-Matic. Nothing ever lives up to the hype. Like you, I've seen the TV commercials for PC-Matic. Since I obviously have to rely on my computers... I decided to give it a try. Now, do you have an older computer running maybe Windows XP? I do. And it's running like it's fresh out of the box. As a matter of fact, I've installed PCmatic on all of my Windows desktops. And yes, I can tell the difference. So, if your computer is running slow or crashing, or if you just have to rely on your computers like I do, go to my website, paranormalfiller.com. Click the PC Matic banner and then try one of their free scans. PC Matic for speed, stability, security. You won't be disappointed. Welcome back to Paranormal Filler. Our guest tonight is CC, Queen of the Paranormal. Now, um, on the EMF thing, now that would not have occurred to me because, now only because, um, I am so trying to get groups to not rely so much on the blinky light devices. That's right. Um, because, okay, EMF. Now, I do believe there is a a connection between EMF and what we would call the paranormal. I just don't mm-hmm. think it's a connection that everybody has always assumed, that ghosts are made of energy, and when they do stuff, you know, it makes your lights go off. Um, <laughs> I tend to think that when... The paranormal, what we would call the paranormal, interacts with our world. It creates a little um, energy collision, you might say. Our world to their world. And if your meter's in the right place at the right time, boom, Mm -hmm. you'll get a reading. Okay. Uh, So, you know, so in other words, I never put, especially some of the consumer-grade devices that people are waving around these dark houses. uh, Mm -hmm. I just never really, because... I mean, most, let's face it, between you and me, most of these groups don't know the difference between a tri-axis meter and a, and a single-axis meter. They don't understand the way energy moves and flows. And No, they don't. And, and they all, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, the only, the only value I really see in an EMF meter is if you go into a location that's loaded with EMF, then... I'm not. Now that's not to say there's nothing paranormal going on, but there are other issues that the people might want to deal with before we worry about whether or not grandma's mm-hmm. ghost is kicking around in the kitchen. Yeah, you know, and they seem to forget the simplest, simplest of sciences that they really need to know before they start taking out any equipment, whether it's a FLIR, whether it's the EMF meter. Um, they have to be mindful of the fact. We're all looking for energy. That's all we're looking for with the thousand rods or anything else out there. We're looking for the energy of the past. That's what we're looking for. But they also forget that energy is around us all the time. It ebbs. It flows. It's in our environment. It's in our atmosphere right where we're standing right now. And so you got your little meter out and you got your fleur out or you got your thermal, you know, meter cam, whatever you have out there looking for heat, looking for cold, 
what happens when you have these naturally flowing, you know, uh, patterns that go ebb and flow, ebb and flow, that send your equipment crazy? Um, it's just natural. It's naturally happening in your environment. It doesn't mean you have a ghost because your stupid machinery went off. <laughs> what I like to do is ask if it'll go off on a command. Then, then maybe you have energy with an intellect. I don't know. But I can tell you now that all this equipment is just to make somebody's pockets, you know, uh, rich. That, that's really about it because you can tell good and bad energy. You can tell good and bad energy when you walk by somebody on the street. Can you? Well, actually, I'm kind of dull to it. So, uh, you know. <laughs> oh, listen, I'm, I'm going to tell judge you something. Of character. If you come. Um, look, no, I, you're a good judge of character. I'm sure you are because you, your your wife sounds just delightful. And so you feel good energy from her. I'm sure you do. But you could be walking down the street or in a grocery store or somewhere, and somebody walks by you, and for some reason you're thinking to yourself, they look okay. I just don't have a good feeling. Oh, yeah, I, I don't yeah. know why. That's it. And I, so uh, as you can feel this negative and positive, you know, while you're in a home or, or, or whatnot looking for the so-called ghost. And with your equipment. and But you have to remember that these uh, energy patterns ebb and flow. And a lot of times they make the equipment so sophisticated that it goes off uh, when you have your cell phone on you and it's even shut off. Um, it, it'll go off uh, to a hearing aid, um, a dishwasher, impulse wiring. That doesn't mean you have a ghost. It just means you got some really sensitive equipment. So when I do that, I like to go in with maybe middle of the road, not lower equipment, not wicked high equipment, something that will kind of maybe block out all that, that other stuff that's happening. And when I do ask on command, which I have on several of the shows, you can clearly see the response taking place, whether it's an EMF meter, the dowsing rods, or even a candle sitting on a table. You know, um, we've had the flame bent completely to one side asking a question mm -hmm. and then straight back out. So um, there's many, many things that people don't realize. They just think they're going to go in there and and do it the way every, you know, like television does it. But they really have to be mindful and do their research and, and do it the right way. Because it is a serious business. If I, uh, you think about it, your heart is in it and this is what you do for a living and this is what you teach, whether it's dowsing or mm -hmm. anything that belongs to the paranormal realm. Um, it's serious. It's serious to me. And I, I believe that's why I've, um, I've grown so fast and so quickly and gone from like the, the para conventions to the bigger ones because I do take it serious. And I know I'm jovial and I laugh and we have a blast and all this kind of stuff, you know, uh, with the rock music and all the, the rock stars and everybody. But um, they know I'm serious. I'm trying to get that energy to supercharge the room, to use it uh, for what I know how to use it for and that spirit communication. Well, also a person that has a true passion for the paranormal, that's going to come across one way or the other. And mm -hmm. joviality, or in my in my case, I wave my hands a lot and get really excited when I talk <laughs> about it. Um, I'm on the radio now, and I'm waving my hands. That's why I wanted to put a webcam up, is because nobody would believe that they... I do air quotes on the radio. I mean, who does wow. that? Uh, but it, it is... Uh, that's... Um, well, I, that's one of my new presentations. People ask me about podcasting. I said, it has to come from your heart. Uh, whatever right. your topic is, paranormal or whatever. And if you're going in these, a lot of these groups, they they get together for different reasons. And uh, usually, nine out of ten times, it's a sincere reason. But I'm not always sure that the reason is deep enough. To, to make them want to reach out beyond, like you were talking about, the stuff they see on TV. In other words, uh, if a light goes off, if any meter, if I have a meter that mm -hmm. I'm using, I want to know exactly what that meter does. A lot of people don't. They're, right. they're happy that the light goes off. Uh, uh, ghost <laughs> right. box is a great example. I preach this all mm -hmm. the time. I believe that a ghost box works. I will not use one very much because I can't explain it to you. I can't explain exactly how it works, so you know I, I'm, I'm not comfortable using it. Now, let's. Uh, one thing I want to cover before we get off here. Mm -hmm. uh, reading your sure. bio, you you talk about the dowsing and you talk about this other stuff. What are your specific set of gifts? So, lay the rods down, get rid of the blinky mm -hmm. lights, 
this apparently came to you at a young age. What is your connection to the spirit world? My connection to the spirit world. Um, I believe I was gifted. I was given a gift to be able to. Uh, I'm trying to put it in words. I can see it. It's like a big opening, a big gold opening, like your crown chakra, just a big opening that you can take the spirit world down through that and give it to other people and to communicate that way. I'm not a medium, uh, but I can be if you want me to. But I don't do that, and sometimes I do. But I find more than not that I watch mediums. I've been around a lot. Uh, This is not my first rodeo. (laughs) And I find that a lot of mediums play on the heartstrings of people that have, you know, their animals have passed away or their loved ones have passed away. And they want to communicate. They want to get a message. And these mediums, um, they, they're like detectives. They read you. And, hey, I, was at, I work for the Lawrence Police Department in Lawrence, Massachusetts, and I can read you. I work gang, Unit 1, the gang task force. I graduated Northeast Regional Police Institute in Tewksbury, Massachusetts. And all, I'm not saying all mediums. I think there are wonderful mediums out there. I really do. And I've actually had some that um, could actually read me, and I'm hard to read. And I was amazed by the whole thing. And um, But they don't um, – it's like they just take your money and read for signals to add another question, to say this. And you are honestly thinking they're reading your mind, and they're not. They're taking your money. And that's not good. What I do that's different is I, I let you talk to spirit yourself. And just put my hands back, and and they're able to do that. And that's a gift I was given. Um, I would have to say through um, generations and generations of dream interpreters and spirit communicators uh, through the women's uh, side of the family, um, over over seven generations, anyways, that stem back to Poland and Russia. Well, now, okay, now what you just described to me is a typical medium minus. Uh, when you described yourself, minus the fill in the gap part, my theory mm-hmm. on mediums is now there are some that are just flat out cold readers. Absolutely, you know, absolutely. Yeah. You know, um, but I have ran into to a lot both on the show and going around to conventions, and I've met some that I'm just positive were had some really strong gifts. But mm-hmm. what I've caught, yeah. even some of the really gifted ones doing, um, I don't know how good their filter is on what comes from spirit and what they dream up themselves. And I've mm-hmm. caught them filling in the blanks. And I do <laughs> think, I do want to agree yeah. with you, I think that once they start, that money starts sliding across the table to them, they want those blanks filled in. That's right. And they fill it in themselves. And that, I'm not going to say, I don't want to call it dishonest, because honestly, I don't think sometimes they even realize they're doing it. No, uh, they have to pay their rent. You know, but but I do, I, I, I've always had this thing that once... Once somebody slides, uh, I mean, some of the, I know one that, gosh, it's like $100 a session. And I just cannot mm-hmm. picture him sliding that $100 back to you saying, hey, I'm not getting anything. Your dad's not here. <laughs> but if you saw him doing that, then you would say, you know what? That's a good man. Because oh, a good yeah. man would, would send the money back. I, I know where I'm, where I'm concerned. I, in fact, I don't even take a dime until they're satisfied in the session's over. I don't bother with it because, and, you know, I'm just going to knock on wood right now, but I have never not had someone um, be connected with the spirit world there if it's trying to connect with an animal or a pet. My hands are way away from them. I'm not even looking at them. They're the ones talking and guiding and moving um, and just standing, you know, still with the rods while the rods are moving. They're the ones that are feeling all this energy transfer that is amazing uh, to do. So um, there is no tomfoolery there because I ain't touching the rods. And so I, I giving people a whole different option to be able to feel the spirit world, communicate with the spirit world themselves. But I do know it's unnerving. I do know because I get nervous. I think some of these people are going to have a heart attack in front of me. I get nervous. I have a gentleman behind there to catch them if they fall because it, it, it's so brand new and it's so strange, you know, to be able to communicate on that level that people might want a medium to interpret, I think is a little easier for them. And that's fine because there are some great, great mediums. 
But I would have to say with, and I have done a lot of marketing research on this, so it's not like I'm just talking about it. And But I have actually gone myself and my children and brought a bunch of friends along. And we would go to these different, you know, psychic fairs. We'd go to these different mediums and keep all the cards. And I'll tell you this, that they um, seem to give the same reading to, like, my son, to me, and to two other girlfriends, one particular person. And I'm thinking, you did nothing. All you did was read, and you gave the same, you might have mixed the words up, but it was the same reading to four different people. And you kept the money. Good, I'm glad you kept the money, because that's the price of research. I was able to deduct it on taxes, so that was cool. I I always just said I don't want a bunch of homeless mediums running around, so I didn't mind giving them money. Uh, One more commercial break, and then we'll be on the last segment of Paranormal Filler for the first hour. Be right back. Do you have a website? Are you a fan of Paranormal Filler? Help me spread the word and grow the show by becoming a Paranormal Filler broadcast partner. All you have to do is place one of my show players on your website. You can choose the last episode player or the 24-7 archive player. Both players automatically update to play my current live show, including the new members hour. In return, I'll drive traffic to your website on ParanormalFiller.com and on my social media accounts. Plus, my broadcast partners are eligible for free or discounted promotions of their Paranormal Events products and services. Become a Paranormal Filler broadcast partner at ParanormalFiller.com. And welcome back, everyone, to Paranormal Filler, Queen of the Paranormal, C.C. Carroll. Is that, do you go by, actually, C.C. Carroll, is that kind of redundant? Because I guess it's, um, the Carroll's one of the Well, I, I, <laughs> a lot of people just call me K.O. now, K-O. you know, because I decided to do, um, you know, the Karosha Ona. And it was, it was actually Bruce Tango, who, um, we're very good friends. And he said, oh, I like that. I like that K.O. We're going to call you K.O. Yeah, from works. now on for knockout. Because we were both cops. <laughs> now, um. One last thing I want to cover before we just do uh, blatant commercial plugs for you. Sure. Um, one thing that I've uh, tried to get people to do that in the in the realm of dowsing, people always um, go to mediums to contact their spirit guides and sure. spirit guidance. And I found that that is um, for the for most people that is a connection that they can make fairly easily through the rods now do you Mm -hmm. recommend that do you find that how do you feel about that well i would think if they never used the rods before they're going to want to be with someone that can mentor them or teach them i know again i'm back to the teaching when i do do um people come to me we do the dowsing rods whether it's um yusuf alton from the game of thrones he was like blown away he was a gentleman that was quite taken back uh with the energy he felt and uh, we converse on a, a steady basis now. He just, he, he, he thought it was amazing. But um, I, and I often tell people, you know, feel this, remember this. And when you go home, I tell them to go in their closet or you can buy my rods on the table, whatever. I'm not shucking them. I'm not trying to push them on you. I want you to feel the energy. Go get, go get some coat hangers and bend them like the rods and practice. Practice. Mm-hmm. And maybe somebody might want to go to a medium and practice with the rods, maybe if a medium does do, you know, the rods, if not, or read up on how to use them. Just don't go and get them and think that they're going to work for you because you may not know how to hold them. You may not know how to start the whole thing off. You might have the white knuckle death grip and they'll never move. You know what I mean? So there's a particular way of holding them. So they will move, but yet they won't move when you just, you know, holding them there or let's say if you're kind of like off keel a little bit that they won't go sw- you know swiveling around but you don't want to hold them too tight no and uh, i have to tell people don't put your thumbs on top of them uh oh, God, get, yeah. get, get, i recommend i recommend one inch clearance between the bend of the rod and the top of your index finger so yes. you know, there, there is an entire you know science to this uh yeah yeah, quote, yeah right there is it. <laughs> uh do you use the rods personally to enhance, okay, you're helping other people. Do you use them mm-hmm. personally, as I do? Now, I, this is one thing I'll, I confess. 
I use them for my own spiritual guidance. Now, once again, the topic came up that I think that my spirit guides think I'm being lazy when I do it and not trying to Mm. connect them directly. But at the same time, they do help me out, and I get my advice that way. Do you do anything like that, or do you reserve this for spirit communication? No, I actually use them on a steady basis. I travel with them. I have them in my purse. I, you know, I, I'm. Will they let you through? Well, I've never tried. Will they let them go through uh, uh, airport security? I don't have a problem. Okay, I'm I, I don't. But uh, I've only flown twice with them. I like to drive because I, uh, well, as you know, like you said, you're going to this Paracon and they didn't want to pay to travel. Um, I have an assistant that travels with me. And they don't want to pay her airfare either. So we get in the car and drive. They will pay the travel, but, you know, I just put her in a car and we'll drive. So most of the time when we go to these things, um, we're driving. So that, that's not a problem. But the couple of times I flew, whether it was to Omaha, Nebraska, we were doing um, um, a Comic-Con out there. Um, no problem at all. And once to North Carolina to Charlotte, uh, I had no problem with them. They didn't know what they were. And then they took my big banner and opened it up. And once they saw that, they were like, okay. And they, they let it all go. So I didn't okay, have a problem. Well, I, might, uh, I, I need to get my nerve. I just I don't want to be the guy cavity searched. I just. Um. Oh, please, no. And the thing <laughs> is, you don't want them to take it away from you either because you're like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> no, 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 no. I need those. <laughs> I am. Um, so. Well, you know, I, would, I, I wouldn't take the good pair. I'll put it that way. Uh, but, mm. uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm pretty flexible on uh, uh, if I get to a location. And like you said, I get, you find the coat hangers and, and, and come mm-hmm. up. But, okay. And, um, I also, and I also try to, like, put up my hands. Like you can see in the position of, of the website with your hands out. That's for the energy. When I go to an investigation, I'll walk in with the hands like that. I teach people just to sit there with their hands on their lap and ask for a relative to touch them. And what the energy would feel like. It feels similar to the dowsing rods in your hand. And so I get a lot of email that they connected with this one, that one, and they didn't even have to use the dowsing rods. So, yeah, the dowsing rods is the instant, like, eye candy. You can see it. Mm-hmm. You've got to see it to believe it. And then you advance to, you just put your hands out, and you can feel it. So um, that's where I get a, lo- a lot of people writing me, and they really like it because you're teaching always teaching so they can teach other people. It's important that we share our knowledge and that we continue to teach on larger scales. Okay, let's do some blatant commercialism now. Uh, first of all, your website, queenoftheparanormal.com. Nothing yes. tricky about it, people. Finally, nope. somebody with a good web address comes on the show. <laughs> queenoftheparanormal.com. Um, yep. Anything else you want to plug? Any uh, appearances you got coming up or anything? Oh, my gosh. Just go to the website, please. I have been adding them literally weekly. I have a full schedule this week. I've got filming movies scheduled. I'm part of the Exorcist Legacy. I supplied the footage for the director's cut on the 40th anniversary um, Blu-ray DVD of the Exorcist, and you can see my work there. So that made me part of Warner Brothers' uh, history with the Exorcist, and um, that's wonderful to talk about that. Um, and you can read all about how that came about on queenoftheparanormal.com. And from there, you can get to the Facebook fan site. I've got thousands and thousands of people, whether it's Twitter or wherever, they all, you know, like my friends and write to me. And so it's a lot. It, it, it's great. You only get a lot of information at queenoftheparanormal.com. Well, KO, I'm, now I'm actually going to call you KO. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> like I'm supposed to. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on, and I'm glad we were finally able to get both of our schedules straight out where I could Excellent. get you on. And I hope I yeah. didn't bore you too much talking inside baseball stuff all night. Oh, no. This <laughs> <laughs> so, everybody, this has been Paranormal Filler. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. If you're listening live, stay on WIHGradio.com for our second hour.
Paranormal 